Hi, my name's Baz Kinder and I'm from Wellington PPM. We're Microsoft Gold Partners specializing in project portfolio management and we've also got a silver competency in learning. Today we'll be looking at Microsoft Project Server 2010 and specifically we'll be focusing on inconsistent approaches to project management and enterprise project types, otherwise known as EPTs. Before doing that, let's have a look at the evolution of Microsoft Project. So back in 987, Microsoft released the desktop scheduling tool and at that time, it was primarily geared towards individual project managers. As organizations have grown in maturity, as more and more people have wanted visibility of what's happening on projects, and as the need to collaborate on projects has come about, Microsoft released Project Server. So we're currently on version 2010, which is the fifth release. So it's quite a mature solution. It's not just me saying that. These are all server findings of Gartner. In this year's MarketScape 2011 report, where they look at all of the leading players in the project and portfolio management space, they gave Microsoft Project Server 2010 a strong positive rating. Now, the thing that sets Microsoft apart from some of the other vendors in the strong positive category are that Microsoft are the only suppliers that allow you to deploy their solution either in-house, using your own architecture, or to deploy it as software as a service. Whilst everyone else in the strong positive category only allows you to deploy their solution as software as a service, hence tying you in either to monthly contracts or annual contracts. Looking at some of the quotes from Gartner, they also say that Project Server 2010 is a landmark release for Microsoft because it's in this release in which they include SharePoint 2010 as a foundation for things such as workflow, document management and collaboration. They also comment on the fact that Microsoft's licensing is very cost competitive. Let's have a look at the overview of Microsoft Project 2010 and have a look at the components that make up the solution set. So centrally you have Microsoft Project Server 2010. Now that's really a central repository for project related information, whether that's your project schedules, your enterprise resource pool, templates, anything project related, it's held within Project Server. On a day to day basis to interact, most users will use what is known as Project Web App, shortened down to PWA. Depending on what group you belong to, whether you're an executive, project manager, or resource manager, you will go to exactly the same URL. However, thanks to security trimming, you can control not only what people see, but also what people can do within PWA. So you might determine that the only group allowed to see the resource center, for example, are the resource managers. Now, whilst within PWA, project managers can do some light project scheduling, they would probably prefer to use Project Professional 2010 as that offers more functionality. Now, there is a breakdown of functionality available on the web. If you would like it, then please contact us at Wellington PPM and uh, we can send you that document. Last but not least, you can also integrate Project Server 2010 with other Microsoft solutions, as well as other line of business systems. Drilling down further into Project Server 2010, you can see that there are two components that make up the actual solution itself. Before I go into more detail about the actual components, let me just make it clear that not every organization will deploy, first of all, both components, or secondly, every piece of functionality that's available within Project Server. It's always configured and scaled to match the environment. Let's have a look now at a very high level at the two components. The first one is concerned with top-down portfolio management. This is where projects are proposed, it's where business cases can be built, and it's where projects can then ultimately be prioritized and either approved or rejected based upon whether or not they align to corporate strategy and what kind of return on investment they will provide. The second component, which is something that we are focusing on, on today, is concerned with bottom-up project management or project execution. It's where you would do your day-to-day -day project management activities of project scheduling, resource management, reporting, and so on. Here we see the findings of a survey that was published by the Center for Business Practices. So they went out and spoke to a range of organizations ranging from SMEs right the way to large multinationals to identify from them what their biggest pain points were in relation to project management. Quite a few pain points were identified, but the pain point I'd like to discuss today is inconsistent approaches. Now, many organizations find that their project managers don't follow the defined methodology for managing projects. In most instances, it's found that people pretty much go off and manage projects how they want to use their own ad hoc approaches. The problem with this is that it might not necessarily be the best approach, and it's why possibly projects go over budget or behind schedule. And if people are using different processes, then they're also likely to be reporting back in very diverse ways. So all of the KPIs you see are quite subjective and it becomes very difficult to compare one project to another project to see what's working well and what possibly isn't working so well. 
Moving on, let's have a look at enterprise project types with Microsoft Project Server 2010. So, to meet the lifecycle management needs of an organization, Project Server 2010 allows you to create multiple enterprise project types, otherwise known as EPTs, to address each specific requirement. So each EPT can include an enterprise project template, a very specific workflow, so you might have very simple workflows for small projects, through to quite complex workflows for larger projects. You can also have a variety of project detail pages to elicit the level of detail that you need to pull out depending on the type of project that it is. And each project can also have a very custom and a very specific enterprise project site template. Moving on to the diagram here on the right hand side of the page, what you see here is a variety of project requests coming in, but depending on which enterprise project type has been selected, they're directed through very specific workflows. Depending on which workflow it is, you're then requested to complete certain levels of information within the workflows. And we'll see how this works during the live demo shortly. So just before we delve into the demo, let me give you a quick rundown of what we'll be seeing today. I'll show you how easy it is to start a brand new project using a EPT, an enterprise project type. And within that, I'll demonstrate how the workflow works and I'll give you an example of phases and stages contained within workflows. I'll also show you project detail pages which can uh, help collect information at various stages of a project and we'll also show how that can help standardize and uh, increase consistency of the data entry. I'll also show you last but not least an enterprise project template preloaded with generic resources contained within an enterprise project type. So here we are now on the PWA project web app homepage. So here on the left hand side what you see is a range of options. And the first option that we see is related to projects and uh, specifically in the project center, that's where I would go as a project manager or as an executive to see a centralized list of all the projects within the organization. And within that section, there's a variety of views available and uh, we'll have a look at that very soon. Moving down, we've got my work and this is where team members would typically come to view any work that's been assigned to them. There they can get visibility of which projects are involved with and uh, specifically which tasks. Under resources, this is where the resource manager would come to view a list of all the enterprise resources. And within that section, you can also access a series of dashboards relating to resource availability and so forth. So moving down, we see the strategy section, and that's typically where PMO managers or portfolio managers would come to prioritize any projects that have been nominated for selection. We're not gonna go into detail on that today, but that is covered in a separate video. Moving down, we have business intelligence, and that's where you can go to access a series of dashboards uh, relating to the project portfolio that's currently in Project Server. And again, that is covered in a separate video as well, should you be interested. Further down, we've got the settings section. So I'm currently logged in as an administrator, and that's where I could go to administer Project Server. Now, let's say, for example, I'd logged in as a team member, and the only option I might actually be able to see might be my work. Everything else would quite simply be invisible. In the central area of the screen, we have a reminder section. That reminds me about any new tasks assigned to me, timesheets, approvals, status updates, and issues and risks. So, let's now go to the Project Center. So here within the Project Center, I'm currently viewing all of the projects by phase. Like I mentioned earlier, there are a variety of views available, but we're not really going to go into any of those right now. What I'd like to focus in on is the workflow itself. So right now you see the workflow phase names. So there we can see uh, phase one, create. If I minimize all of these sections, then you'll be able to see the workflow in its entirety. So within this particular environment, we've got a workflow that consists of four phases. We've got create, select, plan, and manage. And within each of these phases, we have various stages. So workflow phase one, we've got stage name one, initial review. Then stage two, which is define, and that's where you build a business case for the projects. Now, let's say we want to start a brand new project using one of these enterprise project types. All I would do is go to new, and here I'd be presented with a list of type templates or enterprise project types that are available for me to select from. Let's say that uh, we're going to start a brand new software development project. So if I click on that, it will bring me to a project detail page which is what we see right here. So you can see that some of the fields are mandatory. There's a red asterisk there. And this page could uh, be as complex as you want it to be. You can collect whatever level of information you want at any given stage. So here I will give this project a name. Let's call this the example project. Description, let's just call it ABC, very, very descriptive. We can also select a start date. We'll say that this project is gonna start on the 4th of March. 
and we'll say that this particular project belongs to the IT department and what I'm selecting from is actually a lookup table and this is one of the elements that helps you to increase the consistency within project server. So project department IT, owner, I'm going to leave it myself and then I simply hit save. So when I hit save, here we can see on the right hand side, I'm getting updates as to what's happening uh, in the background. So it's currently processing and now it's creating the enterprise project type using software development. So there we go, the project's now been saved and what we see along the top is a diagram depicting the workflow. So we were in the initiate stage when we first created the project, we're now at initiate checkpoint and if I scroll down, we'll get a bit more of an update as to exactly what's going on right now. So there we go, we see in a bit more detail all the workflow stages. So workflow phase one, create initial review stage one, state in progress, waiting for approval. So now that I've suggested that we run that project, somebody else such as the PMO manager, the portfolio manager needs to approve it before I can then start building up the business case for that particular project. Now this is how it's set up in this particular environment, but of course project server is highly configurable and it could be set up to work how you want it to work. One thing that I would like you all to take note of is that here on the top right hand side we see the name of a project, example project, and beneath that all I can see at the moment is one link and that's for the project initiation page which I completed earlier. Now if I close out and if I go to a project that's further down the uh, life cycle, you'll be able to see the more options become available. So that's closing out and you see here on the top right hand corner that it's currently checking the project back in. And there we go, we're back in the project center. So within the project center and the workflow phase name one, uh, which is create, we see the example project that I've just created. If I minimize that, and if I select a project that's in the next workflow phase, so if we look at the ECRM solution project, if I click into that, you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, here on the top right hand side, we'll notice that a lot more pages are now visible. So whereas before I could only see one link, here I can see three others. And the center of every screen, uh, it's exactly the same enterprise project type for this particular project. So we see that in the previous project I was in the initiate checkpoint phase. Right now I'm in the select checkpoint. If I scroll down under workflow stages, you can see what's been completed and what is yet remaining to be done. Initial review completed, defining the business case completed. We're currently in the select checkpoint. That's where the project portfolio will be uh, prioritized. And uh, that's currently in progress, waiting for approval. So that was a very, very quick look at uh, that particular enterprise project type. If I close out, let me show you a project that's been created using a different project type. And uh, we can use this particular project here. So whereas all the other projects belong to IT, we do have a couple of HR projects here that have been created using the HR specific enterprise project type, which is there somewhere. But uh, going back to the list, let's click on human capital management. And you should notice with the workflow diagram along the top, and certainly it is, it's a lot smaller than the previous enterprise project type that we had. The previous one that we had had eight stages within it. This one only has six. Let's close out. Something else that I would like to point out right now is that within enterprise project types, you can also have enterprise project templates. So if you know that you're running the same type of project again and again, you know that it's going to follow pretty much the same schedule. You can have the same tasks within it. they are all going to take roughly the same amount of time and you need certain types of resources to complete the work. So within the enterprise project types, you can attach enterprise project template. And that's what we'll see now within this particular project, the payroll system upgrade. I click into that. So here we are within that particular project and we're currently viewing the schedule. And in fact, I don't even need to go into Project Professional because here you see a breakdown of all the uh, phases and uh, tasks within this particular project. But in the resource names, you can see that we've got some named individuals. But at certain points, you can see that we've got what is known as a generic resource. So that's an analyst. So we can see in a few places that analyst has been placed there as the type of resource required to complete the particular tasks in question. So that's all self-contained within Enterprise Project Types. And that really concludes this demo, which was quite short, but hopefully that gives you an indication as to what enterprise project types are and what kind of possibilities exist.
Now, PPM in a box is our pre-built Microsoft Project Server 2010 deployment package. It's designed to get your organization up and running within 12 days at a fixed price. To get full details on the package itself, then please visit our website, which is wellingtonppm.co.uk. On the website, you can also request a callback and a member of our team will be in touch with you within 24 hours.